It is Friday, January 21st in the NBA, and I'm back with my four best picks of the day. Yo, what's going on, everyone? This is Austin from Calling Our Shot. Let's recap yesterday because we brought out the brooms. Not much of a victory left, just a 1-0 day. Julius Randle over four and a half assists, our best bet of the day. Cash is with two minutes left in the first quarter. Quick and easy money, but the best part about that bet, you got to turn off the TV and stop watching the Knicks play basketball. I say that with the Knicks pennant up above my head. Yeah, that team needs help. But hopefully we helped you guys out. If you are new to the Calling Our Shot community, consider clicking that subscribe button down below. It only takes one second out of your day to go click that button and we're roughly about 40 to 50 percent of the people watching the video aren't subscribed so welcome aboard to the cos community if you want drop a like and let's enter the weekend making some money now we got it's friday hopefully we can enter and make some money today now my last note our best bets for saturday in the nfl where we got two games on we got the Bengals versus the titans and of course we got the 49ers and packers that will be live at 10 a.m eastern time so it might already be live by the time you're watching this video so go check out that one afterwards we we'll linked at the end of the video as well as in the comments down below and in the and in the description but my last note, let's get after it. Go follow us on all our social media links, all linked down below. We're grinding on all of them, taking call on our shot to the moon. We appreciate you guys. Now, let's get into our best bet of the day. Now, the best bet was once claimed a jinx segment. And I, while I didn't disagree, it was 15 and 19. That was roughly about a month and a half ago. Best bet segment has absolutely turned it around. 28 and 10 run, cashing over 73% of the bets over the past month and a half. So let's dial back in. Best bet of the day, it's the process. Joel Embiid, over 29 and a half points, minus 120 on DraftKings. Now, this line feels borderline disrespectful, and it was disrespectful a couple, I believe a couple games ago when it was against the Celtics, and they opened it up at 27 and a half. And I feel like we could be being trapped here, but you know what? I'm falling right into the trap because Embiid has been on an absolute mission, been on an absolute tear. Over his last 15 games, Embiid, he's hit this over in 13 of them. And the two games he missed, 23 and 25 points, like that game against the Celtics. Now, He's cleared this line and scored 21 points and literally all of them. This guy, this guy's an absolute beast, and I think he continues it today. Now look at the last game. He dropped 50 points against Mo Bamba and the Magic. What a ridiculous game. Today he gets a matchup against the Clippers. Oh, and I meant to say he scored 31 points in all 13 of those games that he went over. So if the line goes up to 30 and a half, don't be worried. I think he still hits that. Now, my only concern here is the Clippers keeping it close. The spread is seven and a half points, but I think they can keep this a little bit close because this Sixers team, come on, it's just basically Joel Embiid or the highway. And the Joel Embiid scored 50 points in just 27 minutes last game. Doc Rivers hates seeing him winning, so he took him out, didn't let him break some records. But either way, you look at this over his last over the last 15 games. Only three teams have allowed more points per game to the center position than the LA Clippers. They're allowing the fourth most points per game, 26.72 points to that position. And they've allowed a ton of rebounds. Just, I don't want to bet on rebounds for Joel Embiid. Sometimes he just says, nah, I'm good. So I'll just bet on the points. Tobias Harris dealing with a little bit of a shoulder injury. So he has, he's been decent shooting the ball well, but not shooting a whole lot. The Sixers also without Danny Green, Shake Milton, Matisse Thybul, and potentially even Seth Curry as well today. Sharper Bucks have this over at minus 160. And I believe he's able to cruise over this, get 30 plus points. My last note, we all know Joel Embiid. He's a little bit of a troll on social media, but we all know him and Nikola Jokic are regarded as the two top centers in the league. And they always feel like they're competing against each other. You see Joel Embiid drop 50 points. Well, Nikola Jokic, 49 point triple double. And we just, you know Embiid saw Jokic just drop 49 against the team that he plays today the LA Clippers just feel like he comes out tonight and he wants to destroy this team kind of try to stake his claim to the best big man in the NBA I don't care who you guys think it is both these guys are iconic and they're going to be historic for the rest of their career so ride with them he's on a very Damian Lillard-esque run from a couple years back where Dame averaged like 38 40 points per game it was unstoppable I think that's Joel Embiid today. So we'll take Joel Embiid over 29 and a half points, my best bet of the day. And let's move on to another a player prop before we get into my only spreader over under pick of the day. It's going to be Jimmy Butler. I'm taking his over seven and a half assists, plus 100 on DraftKings. Now, a couple different books have this line at, you know, plus 100. And I've seen something like minus 105, minus 110. I'm all for it. Now, Jimmy Butler's props should be pretty good today because last game, he got ejected, and I'm glad I didn't pull the trigger because he was right on my list right there where I was about to pull it, and he got ejected, and today I think he comes out and plays pretty well. Now, you can take his PRA line. Don't mind that, but look at it. The Heat, the Heat, Miami Heat, are taking on the Atlanta Hawks, but they're down Kyle Lowry and Tyler Hero today, two of their primary ball handlers. Obviously, Kyle Lowry runs with the starters. Tyler Hero comes off the bench, kind of overlaps with the starters, but both those two guys kind of run the point. Well, they're both out, and Jimmy Butler's going to be running the point guard position today. His last five games without Lowry, he's had three, 10, 15, 5, and 10 assists. So, obviously, the three assists is not great. That was the game he got ejected. He only played 15 minutes, but the bright spot, he had eight assist chances in that game. And so, if he keeps up the eight assist chances per 15 minutes and plays his normal 35 minutes, he average 18 assist chances per game. I think that's what we get today. Now, like I said, they take on the Atlanta Hawks, 
one of the worst defenses in the NBA, currently with the 29th best defensive rating, or AKA the second worst defensive rating in the NBA, second to last. And look, these two teams just played each other in that game, Butler had 10 assists. So great, great your track record. And that was a game Tyler Hero and Kyle Lowry played in. Both those two guys had their own 20. They could both those two guys combined for 20 assist chances and of course, they combined for, I believe, 11 assists themselves. Look, over Butler's last seven games, which most of them have overlapped with Tyler Hero and Kyle Lowry, he's averaged 10.4 assist chances. Tyler Hero in those games, 10.7 assist chances, and Lowry, 16 assist chances. He should see plenty of usage today, and I think he'll be able to hit this over pretty easily in a high-scoring game against the Atlanta Hawks. In Jimmy's last five games against the Hawks, he's at 10, 7, 9, 10, and 11 assists. Of course, I think he gets us eight tonight. And of course, it's worth noting over the last 15 games, the Atlanta Hawks have allowed the fourth most assists per game in the NBA. It's relatively high over under for a Miami Heat game. And I think they score. And I think that he does. I think we see Jimmy Butler assist a ton of his teammates, whether it's Duncan Robinson, whether it's Max Struess, whether it's Caleb Martin, it does, or Bam out of bio, it doesn't matter to me. I think Jimmy Butler gets his eight assists today. So we'll ride with him over seven and a half assists. So move, I think Max Struess playing today. Who knows? Now moving on to my over under pick of the day. Taking the Celtics and Blazers, I'm taking the over 213 and a half points. I didn't like a lot of the spreads today, so I'm going to an over-under. I feel like maybe we'll have some better success here because spreads and over-unders not my bread and butter. But look, when I looked at both these two teams, I just don't believe they match up all too well against each other. Now, I'm not sure if Marcus Smart plays today, but we know the Blazers get majority of their scoring from their guards. Now, Damian Lillard out today, but Anthony Simons and CJ McCollum, Anthony playing very well lately. Now, if we look at the Celtics, they get the majority of their scoring from their big men. If you're talking about, or their, their small forward slash guards, you talk about Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum. Those are two primary scores for this team. And I just don't think the Blazers have the defense to match up with those guys. Now, these teams played back about a month ago, December 4th, Final score, 145 to 117. I feel like both these two teams are capable of going off and scoring a ton of points. I think that's what we get here today, knocking down threes like crazy. Now, look, the Blazers had the third worst defensive rating in the NBA. While the Celtics have a good defensive rating, they are capable of giving up some open shots. And we'll look at it. Some, some games, they just don't show up to play defense. Now, over the last two games, the, the Blazers have gone under in both of them pretty clearly. They went under against the Miami Heat, very good defensive team. And, and the Heat were missing, obviously, Butler after a majority of the game, Kyle Lowry and Tyler Hero. So they had to rely on the defense. The other game they went under was against Orlando Magic. I mean, come on. The Magic stink. So in the previous games, they were soaring over this over, and I think they soar over this over again. The Blazers could be in catch-up mode in this game. And look, the Boston Celtics have cashed two straight unders, and they've only cashed three straight unders twice this season. I don't think they can do it again today. I think they're doing an offensive explosion. Now, it can come at the hands of the, or the Portland Bla the tra Trail Blazers. Celtics have hit this over in five straight games versus the Trailblazers. Tonight, they will make it six. So right if that is the over. 214 points, also not asking for a whole lot. So I think they can get it done. Now my fourth pick for the video, we will likely add some more plays down below. So definitely check the pinned comment section because there's a couple others and I'm kind of hinting at them after this pick. John Morant, over 40 and a half points, rebounds and assists, minus 120 on Caesars. Look, this is a play I wanted to pull the trigger on last game, but I just didn't, and I'm gonna pull on the trigger on this one. So if you don't have points, rebounds, and assists, likely lean this over and probably assists. I think assists might have the best edge, but also points is a good one as well. Now look, Morant and I, I'll say, and this is my olive branch, we don't have the best track record. Normally when I say, you know what, Morant should have a great day, he just comes out and gives me like 15 points and says, hey, is this what you wanted? I'm like, no, that's not what I asked for. But today I think he's aggressive because we look at the Grizzlies, they're down so many guys, down Dylan Brooks, Desmond Bain, Tyus Jones, Kyle Anderson, and Killian Tilly. So all, I uh, believe, Dylan Brooks is the only one due to injury, the rest due to health and safety protocols. All those guys should be out again today. Now, basically that leaves Morant and Jaron Jackson Jr. as the only guys to shoot. Zaire Williams, a rookie, comes off the uh, starts, but he's not gonna be that aggressive. Jack, John Conchar, I believe he starts too. He's not gonna be that aggressive. And then Steven Adams, the guy that doesn't really do much on the offensive end. So it leads to John Morant shooting a ton, and that's what we asked today, because the last game when all these guys missed, John Morant attempted 27 shots, scoring 33 points eight rebounds and 14 assists for 55 PRAs. That's all we're asking for today, John. Not too much, just 33 and 14. Come on, man, you're capable. John Morant, we know, is one of the best players in the NBA. And all I'm asking for is 20 shot attempts. I'm not asking for, for 27, just 20. If he gives us 20 shot attempts, I can live with the success rate of this because he's hit 20, he shot 20 or more times in 14 games this season. He's hit the over in 12 of them. The two misses, he had 37 and 38 PRAs. Now, the spread, is three and a half. So I think we should get a close game between the Denver Nuggets and the over under 220 points, which is pretty high for a Nuggets game. Now, I took PRAs in this game because I, you know, I, I like the points over, but 
In my opinion, we could see John Murray fill up the stat sheet just like he did against the Milwaukee Bucks. Now we look at it, Jokic will be guarded by Steven Adams. Steven Adams is one of the main rebounders for the Grizzlies, and that means Steven Adams is out of the paint guarding Jokic on the three-point line, kind of Jokic guarding the, and facilitating the offense. We could see, you know, Steven Adams doesn't have the greatest numbers against Jokic himself, but look, Morant has two career games versus the Denver Nuggets in those with 20-plus field goal attempts. In those games, he had 41 and 56 PRA is cashing in both of them. And look, the one game he cashed just barely on the hook was a combined score of just 203 points. The Bucks expect 220-ish today. And so there's more room for Morant to have a better game. But on the last note, John Morant, we know, one of the most aggressive guards in the league at getting to the rim, averages 20 drives per game, good for third in the NBA behind Shea Gilgis Alexander and Luka Doncic. Now, last game, he drove 21 times, and that was against the team in the Milwaukee Bucks, one of the best interior defenses in the league. They say, you know what? You're not scoring at the rim. You're going to have to score on the outside. And look, John Morant still attacked the rim, was 21 drives. But you saw Morant shoot 10 threes, much more than he normally attempts per game. He did make four of them, so a good sign. But look, the Bucks allow the sixth fewest points per game in the paint. That's because they have Giannis, they have Bobby Portis. They say, you know what? You make threes to beat us. And they just kind of pack in the paint and let Jaron Jackson Jr. had a great game. No surprise there. Now the Nuggets, a little bit of a different defense. Obviously, they have Jokic. Pretty good defender himself, but he's not a rim protector. He's a paint protector. And so if John Morant can get into the paint, he should be able to score at will against this Nuggets team, currently allowing the seventh most points per game in the paint per, per game this season. So I think John Morant, once he gets in there, should be able to finish at will. And so that is what I'm going to ride with John Morant, over 40 and a half PRAs. I think we're doing a great game for Mr. Morant. Send in the olive branch. That's all I'm asking. Now, those are my four plays right now. Now, I guarantee I probably add at least one, maybe two more. I like to finish with an odd number of plays uh, just because, you know, it lets us go three and two or two and three or whatever it may be. Those will be down below linked in the pinned comment section. So definitely go check them out. Also post them on Twitter at Call on a Shot. So definitely go follow us there. But like I said, if I want to give you a hint at the guys. Consider Pascal Siakam a pretty good day and Giannis the Greek freak. I think he has a pretty good day. Check out the numbers against power forwards against the Bulls. You'll understand why. Now keep close attention to the pinned comment section down below. Also, Saturday's best bets in the NFL will be live at 10 a.m. Eastern time. Sunday's best bets in the NFL will be live at 10 a.m. Eastern time tomorrow. So definitely go check those out. I'll link it up on the screen right now. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. Let's go have a great start to the weekend. Have a great Friday and I appreciate you guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.